Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. I hope everything in your world is good. I hope that this sounds better than it did yesterday and better than the day before that and all that sort of thing. I've been playing with this a good bit more. It's still weird to me because I'm still not getting lights to show up on here, but the camera seems to be doing a pretty good job of recording as far as I can tell on its EQ. So I'm not going to pay attention to these lights at all. I I, I don't know if it's because the preamp in this camera is always on and there's nothing I can do about it or what, but I'm definitely, it's definitely, it sounded good to me yesterday. It was a little quiet and I recognize that. So today um, I've sat down and I've, I've tried to figure out whether I should be messing with these line level knobs or the main mix knobs. I think the answer is no and I should only be messing with this microphone gain. I watched quite a few videos on that. And I don't understand it, but um, what I understand is that different microphones need a certain amount of gain, and um, this microphone seems to need 60. But when I turn this knob up, it gets horrendous, and I don't know why that is. There's two different scales on here. One is in little circles, which is plus 10 or plus 60, so it, it's always boosting. I think that is for the XLR input because it's got the little circle around it. That's my best guess. And so I guess, in theory, I am, I am boosting the signal right now by about 20 decibels. That, that must be where it's supposed to be. That must be how it works. So I think yesterday I had that turned down a little bit lower so the video was a little quieter. Um, but it did sound really clean to me. And uh, I think Jonathan Howe said that it almost sounded too clean. Like it sounds like recording booth clean. And... Um, Truthfully, when you're in here, th that's how it sounds. Like, I sound like I'm in a recording booth now. It used to be really echoey until I put up all the sound panels. So right now there's two sound panels above me. There's sound panels uh, on this wall that I'm, I kind of speak into. Not really. I'm kind of, the camera, behind the camera, there's no sound panels. There's a bass trap in that corner. But then all the other stuff in here that's filled the space up has really brought the echo way down. So when you're in here talking, there's no echo. I mean... There's always a little bit, but it's pretty clean. So it does sound fairly noise-free in here. Uh, when the AC is on, or the, the blower for the, the HVAC is right on the other side of this wall, you can usually hear it. I think you could hear it yesterday even. I'm not positive. But what I have learned is the EQ stuff. Um, on this particular mixer, I have the EQ High which is 12 kilohertz range, if I turn it up, I get a lot of buzz. And so I've heard of the high-pass filter, which means cutting out. I thought a high-pass filter meant cutting lows gets rid of that, which apparently it does. But I'm actually putting a little bit of low back in because the lows on this uh, mic make my voice sound a little funny. And so I turned the high-pass down a little bit. So I'm a little bit below zero with the high-pass, with the high f frequencies and a little boost to the bass frequencies. Uh, maybe that's just the way my voice likes it. I don't know. I tried to listen through the headphones. I went and bought another adapter. Not that one. I went and bought another headphone adapter. And I thought it was broke because I plugged it in. I was getting all this crazy noise because I was doing what the guy on the video told me to do, which was to set your line level and your main mix to zero, turn this knob until you start getting lights, and then that's where you're supposed to be. But in truth, it, no. It's like blown out really bad. Um, so I don't know what's going on there. Uh I don't know, but it is what it is, and I think it's working well now. I hope it's working well now. I hope that um, it's all good, and, um, you know, this was a good birthday present. <laughs> Tomorrow uh, is is a day. It's another day for me, and I, I don't really treat my birthday as anything special, but some people do, and... Uh, I told my boss today that I may or may not take tomorrow off, and she she's a new boss. She's only been our boss since January 1st, so she's like, why is that? Is it something special? And I told her, well, it you know, may or may not be my 40th birthday. She's like, that's a big one. And I'm like, no, not really. It's just another birthday. But the funny thing is, my kids and I have always joked that I'm just a 12-year-old. And so my, my youngest daughter, I had her this morning, and she was like, you're going to turn 13 tomorrow. And I thought that was kind of funny. She, she likes to pick on me like that, so I appreciate her for that. But yeah, I'm going to be a teenager tomorrow, according to my kids. <laughs> That's, it's fun. So uh, this was a good birthday present. This has been a good adventure trying to figure out how to make this thing work, how to get clean audio um, so that I could save 
essentially, you know, $30 a month is significant for me. That's a huge savings. Um, that's a big deal for me. You know, $30 a month is more spending cash than I normally have in any given month. And that, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, so that's a big deal. And uh, this is a this is a huge boost to get me, you know, past that. So um, I think the next, the next up on the chopping block for this year and the show would be a camera body. This is a Canon EOS M3. I really, the new uh, M bodies, the new mirrorless bodies, um, are have a lot of features that I would love to own. And this camera is starting to kind of literally fall apart. The screen bezel is, the screws of they just, I guess they just loosen, and they're basically impossible to find. Uh, I don't know if I could contact Canon to find those, but I've had to take, I had to take screws out of my other tiny camera to put in this. So I've basically been salvaging stuff to keep this camera going, and I also think that this um, microphone jack is starting to wear out because I do plug in and plug out every single day, and uh, that's probably not good for it. So it'd probably be better if I had uh, some sort of connector just kind of hanging on there that I could always plug my mic into and then if it wears out then I could pull that out and plug in or whatever I don't know I just figured if it ever broke I'd just fix it I'm rambling I'm trying to avoid uh admitting that I'm going to turn 40 in a couple hours yeah I'm old it is what it is so uh thank you all for everything you've done for me uh in the past three years and for gifts like this that keep the show going um, really helped me a lot a lot a lot like I literally would not do this anymore if I hadn't had an amazing group of people that support me um, and keep me encouraging me to come down here and turn the camera on even if it's just to tell you about my life and my day and even if that's not at all interesting <laughs> because um, the therapy that I get from this is the best present so I appreciate you, and um, thank you for being here as always. Thank you for leaving your likes and your comments and your subscriptions and just being wonderful best friends. I really appreciate you, and I will see you tomorrow. Hey, Doc, wait. I want to ask you something. Today's one, in fact, comes from Wikipedia. Do octopuses have three hearts? Octopuses do, in fact, have three hearts. Two brachial hearts pump blood through each of the two gills, while the third is a systemic heart that pumps blood through the body. Octopus blood contains copper-rich protein, Hemocyanin for transporting oxygen. Hemocyanin, sorry.